coaching program, but he's got a really cool way of approaching clients by comparing them, by putting them in different categories. And it's gonna kind of blow your mind a little bit. Uh, so he lives in Costa Rica and he lives the life he wants to live in, in paradise. And that's kind of a life I want to live too. So pay attention to what he has to say because you'll get there too. So everyone give a round of applause to Steve Haru. What's up y'all? Yes, I know it's almost time for the bar, I get it. There's two more speakers. Um, since most of you don't know who I am, just to point out what a great job Noel and Rhett did on videos, most of my videos include Jack and Coke, vodka sodas, and uh, just in case, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so thanks again, uh, Tristan and Nick, for having me. Um, you're gonna hear some things today that you probably have never heard before in the world of sales. And one of the things I'll share with you guys is, if you just keep doing what everybody else is doing for the last 60 years, you're literally gonna be in the same place 60 years from now. You've got to think outside the box and you have to think differently if you wanna get different results. And a couple things, just to get started, a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Boston, so wherever Jeff is, congrats to St. Louis Blues, um, you won. <laughs> Thanks. It's hard to ever hear a Boston fan actually give credit and not bitch about winning, right? Every other, you know, championship. So I want to make sure I hit that up with Jeff. Um, now, this is where I live. And it's funny, I love sharing this because there's so many things you guys see on video, uh, content wise, that aren't real. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The dude with his elbow on somebody else's Lambo. Right? The guy filming his content in a mansion that he rented. I gotta be careful at some of the stuff I say because some of y'all know who I'm talking about. The D-bag who records his videos in front of his Rolls Royce hood ornament. Who, by the way, is parked in a handicapped spot in the video. So this is my house. This is real. I'm closing on it tomorrow. I gotta wire a bunch of dough. Um, you're all invited down, by the way. And the reason I want to share this stuff with you guys is because this is real. And everything that I've built in my life is based on three things. Honesty, integrity, humility. If you focus on those three characteristics, you're going to have an amazing life. I don't give a crap how big your bank account is. I don't give a crap what kind of car you drive. One of the happiest days of my life was when I got rid of my stupid $100,000 Mercedes. Happiest day of my life. It cost me eight grand to get out of the lease. I had to drive it up to the guy in San Clemente. I was like, bro, here's the keys. See you later. Now I drive a quad. My vehicle. <laughs> so I'm telling you guys, you don't need lots of dough and a big bank account to be happy. Some of my closest friends down there don't have a pot to you know what in. But they're the happiest people on the planet because they live in integrity at all times. And that's the one thing you have to do in sales if you want to be able to put your head on the pillow at night. So my gift to you guys today is I just want you to have a completely different take on what it's like to be successful in sales. And one of the things I share with people is, you guys have seen headstones before, right? Graveyards. What they say on the headstone, some little saying, and then you've got the years, right? Born, died. What if on your headstone there was just one number, just a number, and that number was the number of lives that you've impacted? What would your number say? Because a lot of the people I know in this industry, it's only one. That's the number. Themselves. It's all they care about. So can you impact lives? Those of y'all in here that are realtors, you are literally responsible for the biggest purchase in somebody's life ever in history. And one stat that I stole from Eric Gilman from Cutco, and I don't know if you guys know this, less than 10% of homeowners, less than 10% can name their realtor more than three years after they bought their home. Whose fault is that? Realtors. Because what are they about? 
the next sale. It's always about the next client without realizing that when y'all get a client, it should be three transactions. Three, automatically. The one you just sold or helped them buy, the one they're moving out of, and the next one they're moving into. Guaranteed three every time. And by the way, that's every seven and a half years right now. Technically eight because millennials aren't moving as much. So imagine having six built-in transactions. Six every eight years. One person, one transaction equals six. If you live in honesty, integrity, and humility. So a couple things, what we're gonna learn today. How to get into your comfort zone. Um, if you don't know me yet or haven't followed me on Facebook or, or Instagram or LinkedIn, I tend to get in fights. Um, <laughs> some of you know, because we talk a lot. Um, but the guy's not in here who I fight about this comfort zone thing. So we're gonna talk about this in a second because it's the total opposite of everything you've ever been taught. Um, why people buy? You guys think that's important? Should a salesperson want to know why people buy? And then the last one is how to identify your buyer's personality types. I'm not talking about Myers-Briggs or uh, what their disc profile is. You guys can, that's for the birds, okay? How do they buy? Not what are they like at a party, not what are they gonna be like, how do people buy? And if you know that, you're gonna increase your likelihood of making a sale. So, does anyone agree or disagree with this number? That's true, right? Inman, 87%. I was trying to be nice, but thanks, Stickler. 85% um, of realtors are in and out of this business within five years. Why is that? Why is that? Oh, this isn't even in the presentation, but you're getting it. <laughs> Who's heard that book, Men Are From, is it Men Are From Mars? Yeah. Women Are From Venus? It's not just real estate related. What's the furthest planet from the sun? It's not even really a planet anymore? Pluto. What's the closest planet? No. Mercury. Sales managers, all of them, are from Pluto. Sales people are from Mercury. When sales people fail, What's the reason the managers say they failed? Didn't do it, didn't work, they're lazy. You know what the real reason is? Them. Them. But because we live in a society where nobody takes blame for anything, and it's always somebody else's fault, you always have this constant door of recruits. That's why that number's so high. And if you run an agency, What's your business gonna look like if this is your turnover rate? So it's so important that people understand why people leave the business and how do we get them to stay. And how we get them to stay is what I'm gonna teach you next. So I don't know if y'all know this. You are salespeople. Did anybody tell you that on the way in? You're salespeople? 82% of salespeople are uncomfortable with their own selling process. Think about that number. If you're a cook or a chef and you're uncomfortable cooking, how does your food taste? <laughs> so if you're uncomfortable selling, what do you think your results are gonna look like? If you're uncomfortable prospecting, how much of it are you gonna do? Zero. But what do the sales managers tell you to do? Just go do it. I know you've never done it before. I know you'd rather have an ice pick jammed in your eye, but go do it. It'll get better. And then guess what? They don't do it. So how do we get comfortable? If you're uncomfortable in sales, this is what's going to happen. You have no confidence. And the one thing that you need the most in selling is to be confident in what you're doing. If you are not confident in what you're doing, what are your results gonna look like? I usually have a slide up here about the Walendas. Do you guys know the Walenda family? What are they famous for? Tightrope walking. How many of y'all would be comfortable walking over the Grand Canyon a thousand feet in the air? 
One maniac. I mean, one person. <laughs> one person. Why wouldn't you be comfortable on a tightrope a thousand feet in the air? Take a wild guess. Never did it. How many times has Nick Walenda done that? Thousands of times. But the first time he walked on a tightrope, how old was he? A couple years old. How high was the tightrope? Right in front of him. They don't just say, hey, bro, here's the rope. It's only 1,000 feet. And what happens is, when Nick walks that tightrope, did anybody see him do the Grand Canyon walk? How long did it take him? Does anyone remember? Let's say it's an hour, one hour. How much do you think he got paid for that? 100 grand? Who thinks 100 grand an hour is a good rate? Did he get paid 100 grand for that one hour? Nope. What did he get paid for? All the practice, all the expertise, all the years. But that rope, that walk, took one hour. How much time did his team spend setting up the rope? Longer. They didn't go, try it out. <laughs> Weeks, months, what were they looking up? Yeah, what kind of, what about the weather? Wind, a bird activity, ladybug counts, um, barometric pressure. I'm not kidding. They check all that stuff before he gets on the rope. Would you want your team doing that? Yes. Here's what sales managers do. There's the rope. Go ahead. I know you never did sales before, but just go knock on a thousand doors. It'll be good. And we wonder why people fail. If you're not confident on that rope, what happens? You die, right? And that's what happens to people in sales. So if you don't have confidence, you then, of course, will not be consistent. If you're not consistent, you can't win in sales, right? So many great talks today about being consistent, follow up, and those types of things. It's consistency. It's not one hit wonders. That's what makes people have long careers in sales. Third thing, you'll avoid prospecting. Why do people avoid prospecting? Take a wild guess. They're not what? Comfortable. And everything you've heard for the last friggin' 50 years about your comfort zone is what? You've all heard this uh, stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you how backwards this is in sales. Like I said, you're going to hear stuff you've never heard before that other people teach. In sales, if you are uncomfortable, do you think you're going to prospect? Nope. Do you think you're going to knock on doors? Nope. You think you're going to give a great listing presentation? Nope. You think you're going to show a home the right way? Nope. And if you run a team of salespeople, let me ask you, who would you prefer to have? A team full of people who are anxious, nervous, scared, worried, and uncomfortable? Or would you rather have a team that's confident, skilled, positive, and comfortable? Which one would you rather have? Second one. But we keep teaching people, hey, I don't want you to do what you're comfortable with. I know you love knocking on doors, and I know you'll knock on a thousand without even me asking you, but why don't you make some calls? Does that make sense to anyone in here? You make people do what they love to do, right? You help them do that. You don't make them do things they don't want to do. Who's the best quarterback in the NFL? Easy, it's Brady. Easy, don't give me the Aaron Rodgers crap. It's, give me a break, okay? It's Brady and everyone knows it. <laughs> they don't say, Hey, Tom, you know, we know you got the six rings and all, you know, and every record. Um, why don't you go run some routes at wide receiver? How about that? By the way, how'd that work out in the Philly Super Bowl? You help your team do what they're great at. And if they're already good at something and they like to do it, do you have to tell them to do it? Who loves to be micromanaged? Any, any? Oh, no one. Okay. But so many people still do it. Because they try to tell people, 
oh, this isn't in the presentation either. I'm going to get in trouble. Whatever. What have you been told forever in the history of sales? Sales is a blank game. What a bunch of crap. I can't even tell you how this is so bad. Sales as a numbers game is for people who suck at sales. What are you relying on if you believe that sales is a numbers game? What are you relying on? Hope, luck, prayers, wishes, dreams. Boy, yeah, that's great. Who's ever seen Charles Barkley swing a golf club? You're just laughing. What does it look like? Who's never seen him swing a golf club? Who's ever seen a baby giraffe try to stand up? Looks like that. Okay. Charles Barkley has been playing golf for 30 years. He sucks more now than he did 30 years ago. Charles Barkley has hit probably a million golf balls. He still sucks. Why? What do you think he hasn't changed in 30 years? His swing. But it's a numbers game, right? If I just do it more, it's going to get better. Is that how it works? Wrong. Sales is a skills game. And once you learn to do it right the first time, and it takes some time, you benefit the rest of your life. If he actually fixed his swing, he might enjoy playing golf, not shooting 167 every time. Okay? Um, so we've heard all this stuff about getting out of your comfort zone, you have to get in it. You have to do whatever it takes to get in your comfort zone in sales. And if you run a team, you have to help your team get in their comfort zone. If you keep forcing them to do things they don't want, don't like, don't know, don't feel like they want to do, you're not going to have long-term success. So I've got to be careful with the words because I got in trouble for swearing a couple months ago. So now I have to use emojis. <laughs> okay. You know who you are if you're in the audience. So you happy now? Um, so if you're in sales, you have to get into it, not out of it. Into it. Into it. You want a confident sales team. You want a happy sales team. You want a successful sales team. Not one that's anxious, nervous, where's my next commission check, when's my next closing, did it fall out of escrow again, all that kind of thing, right? So how do we get into that comfort zone? So when you're comfortable, you'll have more confidence, okay? Oh, <laughs> is, is Noel in here? Um, the Minnesota accent thing, y'all like that, right? Just on YouTube later, just type in, oh crap, family guy but it's, oh crap, just watch it later. <laughs> You'll know what I mean. Um, if you're confident and you're comfortable, will you work harder? If you get to do what you already love to do and you make money at it, do you need somebody telling you to do it? Third one, you'll prospect more. What's the thing that all brokers, owners, sales managers want their teams to do more of? Prospect but they do the opposite, right? They micromanage people and they make them prospect by threatening them, you're not gonna have any money, is this, you, you, you wanted to work, now you're lazy, all the condescending things that I'm sure people really enjoy uh, about their sales manager. Um, fourth one, you'll sell more homes, okay? Um, another, oh, another fight, sorry. <laughs> another fight I got into. Uh, who knows what ABC is? Oh, you all know this shit, uh, stuff. Okay. <laughs> when did that come out? Does anyone know? When did Glengarry Glen Ross come out? 92. 1992, right? Um, can you guys do me a favor, take your beepers out? <laughs> oh, we don't use beepers. Why don't we use beepers? They're obsolete. Why are we using this crap? This old school garbage about always be closing. I put this post up on LinkedIn about a year ago on a rant because somebody tried to use it on me. 
it got like 170,000 views. Like 4,000 people in Adelaide, Australia know who I am, okay? <laughs> because of this post. You should have seen the messages. Can you please talk to my manager? Um, can I give you my husband's phone number? Right, all this stuff, right, about this ABC garbage. If you believe in this, always be closing, you're always gonna be chasing prospects, always. You're always gonna be chasing the next sale. You're never ever gonna have a business that just comes to you. You'll never have people just reach out and say, hey, I told these three people about you, they're gonna be calling, right? You have to be connecting, always be connecting. That's what it's about. What can you do to help other people, right? If you just have that heart, be heart-centered, connect as many people as you can, everything will come back to you, okay? So let's jump into the four buyer types. And I don't know if you all know this, but there's a lot of these, right? One of the gentlemen in the back was saying, I could give you 100 mistakes I made. But what do you think the biggest mistake, not agents, but salespeople make is? What is the biggest mistake they make? That's a good one. That's a good one. One more. Overtalk the sale, good. Those are all wrong. Um, <laughs> Just kidding, they're all right. This is it though. Salespeople sell to their prospects the way they buy. What should they be doing? Yes, this is the cardinal mistake 95% of salespeople make. And when I bought my last house, not the, uh, this Costa Rica one, the one here in San Diego, this freaking guy, this realtor, Wait, bro, wait till you see the pool in this house. Okay, every in-house, right? Wait till you see the pool. You're gonna love the pool. Wait till you see this pool. After like the eighth house, I physically grab him by the shirt. I go, uh, Mike. <laughs> Mike, I don't give a shit about pools. I've told you 10 times, I don't care about pools. You like pools, I don't like pools. <laughs> If I hear you say the word pool another time, I'm out. <laughs> this is how people sell. You, you ever try to, you talk to somebody that tries to convince you something they do that you just don't like to do? Like a particular music, right? Like country music, right? right? <laughs> or lobster, okay? Something like that, they shove it down your throat, right? Nickelback, right? No, trust me, they're good. Just listen to a couple songs. Right? You can't force people to like what you like. Everybody with me? Once you understand this in sales, it's going to be so much easier for you. Because you just have to appeal to what they like. Who cares what you like? Everybody with me? And when it comes to showing homes, it's really important you all understand this. So the first buyer type is what? What is that? Wrong because I got reamed for this. Yes. <laughs> Say it out loud. Lioness. Happy, ladies? I got reamed for calling this a lion, okay? So the first buyer type is a lion or lioness, okay? And so how you recognize a lion or lioness, it's very simple. These are the A personality types, okay? These are uh, the Mark Cubans, uh, the Beyonce's. You guys with me? Um, they dress really sharp, okay? You can tell. Can you tell if people have nice shoes, nice clothes, nice purses, nice watches, those kind of things? You can see that right away. Um, these are the folks that drive really nice cars. They live in nice neighborhoods. Um, they're the leaders. A lot of times they're C-level executives, owners, right? Folks like that. They always want to be number one. They're very competitive. So can you think of somebody right now that you know that's a lion or lioness? How long does it take you to tell if somebody's a lion or lioness? One second, right? So how you sell to a lion or lioness, and in terms of showing homes, okay? I had to kind of make this, again, real estate specific, because you can use this in any business you're in because I'm sure there's lenders and title op escrow officers and, and title reps and all kinds of folks in here. But in terms of showing a home, here's what you do with a lion or lioness. You wanna show them a home that's at the very top 
or over their price range. So a lion or lioness says, I'm in between 500 and 600. That's our budget. I'd be showing them homes at 600, 650, 675. Why? What do we know about lions or lionesses? Yeah, they like nice things, right? Will they spend a little bit of extra money to have something nicer? We already know that. Second thing, show them the biggest house on the street. Lions or lionesses would much rather have a bigger home, even if it's less money, because of what reason? It starts with an E and ends in go. Oh, ego, great. So these people have egos, agree or disagree? Should you play to that? Do they play to that? really important. Discuss the features that are unique only to that home. The very first time I gave this talk, I don't know what happened, I talked about a red door. This is the only house on the block with a red oak door. <laughs> now some people are like, who the hell would want a red freaking door? But of course, the time I gave that talk at an agency, the broker invited me over to her house for dinner. Uh, that, that didn't sound right. She has a husband and two kids, okay? It's family dinner, okay? Um, invited me out for dinner. What, co what color door do you think she had? Red door, the only red door I've ever seen in my whole life. The same day I used that example. But lions and lionesses will buy something specifically because that's the only house that has that. You guys know the bonus room thing? Hey, there's a bonus room in this house. Wait till you see this. Look at how much stuff you can put in here. It's the only house with a bonus room. And they'll buy it because it's unique and they're the only ones that have it. Last one, and this is a little bit next level. If the previous owner or current owner of that home is successful and is in a business or an entrepreneur or something like that, this person will want to buy that house because it's owned by a successful person. Do you all know that? That's how that works, right? Who's seen Seinfeld before? Remember when George bought John Voight's car? Okay, and it wasn't really John Voight. There was an H in his name. <laughs> he only bought the car because he thought John Voight owned the car. That's it, a piece of crap, 89 LeBaron. Okay, people will buy a home because someone else successful lived in it. These are the things you spend extra time on as a real estate agent. So the next one, elephants. The elephant is the most charismatic, empathetic creature in the animal kingdom. And the coolest picture, I love nature, which is why I live in Costa Rica, but one of the coolest pictures I've ever seen was an elephant carrying a lion cub across a river because the mom couldn't make it over. But that's an elephant. So what do you think elephants are in terms of people and their personalities. Who are the elephants? You got it. Nurturers, caregivers. These are the folks that donate time. These are the PTA presidents, um, HOA board members. They volunteer. Robert, Robert's an elephant, <laughs> right? He helps everybody. You can tell who an elephant is, okay? These are the folks that are very environmentally conscious, right? Want to save the world. Um, you can tell who an elephant is pretty quickly, yes? How can you tell who an elephant is within two minutes of meeting them? What do they usually do when they meet you? Before that, who said it? Hug, right? Does a lion hug you? <laughs> no, like bro, I got five minutes, let's go. Um, so how you sell to an elephant, this is really important. When you're showing the home, don't just tell them there are four bedrooms. Talk about who can stay in the bedrooms because you already found out they have three grandkids and they love their grandkids. So what do you think you're gonna talk about when you go upstairs? Where the grandkids can stay. That's the stuff you talk about with elephants. Um, show them local places in the community and talk about places they can volunteer their time at. This is what they like, this is what appeals to them. Talk about organizations or charities you donate to. Why should you share that with them? 
What do they do? Same thing. What happens if you find out that you and the elephant donate to the same charity? Good or bad? Great. Great. Really good. And this is, these are the folks you talk about really get into the solar, the energy efficient, th those types of things, right? The appliances, the low flux, all that stuff they really care about. Does the lion give a uh, crap about this? <laughs> Environment schmirement, okay? That's the lion thinks. What does the elephant think? They care, right? So third one, my favorite, what is this? Yeah, it's an otter, it's not a gopher. Sometimes like a gopher, it's an otter, okay? So I'm still on the waiting list. There's a place in San Diego that you can swim with otters. It's like a three-year waiting list, like 300 bucks. But what I picture is like me doing a backstroke and like playing catch with an otter. You with me? <laughs> I've seen an otter dunk a basketball. You guys seen that video? It's real. So. He had arthritis, so they taught him to dunk a basketball. I'm not joking, and it cured his arthritis. Um, but as you can see, we all got trapped in videos like they were all saying, I'm watching otter videos, I should be coaching people. Um, so what type of personality do you think the otters have? Playful, fun. Um, the otters are the life of the party, okay? The otters are the ones that are really loud. You can tell who an otter is right away, because sometimes you can't get a word in edgewise with these people. Agreed? These are the fun ones. These are the folks that love to entertain. These are the neighbors that have the block parties. You with me? Does a lion have a block party? No, it's get the, off my lawn. <laughs> you get the difference? So, with otters, this, this one's again another next level thing. But if I were a realtor, which I'm not, if I was a realtor and I was showing homes to an otter, here's what I would do. I'd go to the neighborhood an hour early and I would knock on every single door within a half a mile until I found another what? Otter. And if you find an otter that's on that street and you let that otter know you're gonna be showing the home across the street, what does the otter want? another great neighbor. Are you with me? So the otter is going to do what to help you? Sell the house. So if I'm showing homes to an otter, I'm going to bring the otter. I'm bringing my buyer to meet that person before they ever see the house. What do you think happens when two otters meet? Move your next appointment, <laughs> call your wife, you ain't going to be home for a while, okay? Because what happens is, what do you think the otter does when she or he meets another otter? Part, come on in. I just made mimosas, whatever. You, you with me? You'll be in that house for an hour. Now, your buyer has not even seen the house yet. How do they feel? Good it's much more likely that people, otters, want to be around other otters than they care about the exact house. You follow? This is the stuff, bless you, that matters. Show the otters the fun parts of the neighborhood. Remember we talked with the elephants, we show them the places they can volunteer. The otters, you want to show them the fun stuff. Right? Do you know whether or not somebody drinks or not? Can you tell? I can tell. There's a few of you shaking, checking your watch. Okay. Um, but you can tell, okay? So if you know that, what do you think you could point out about the neighborhood? Where the bars are, right? Bro, you could limp home from here, dude. It's like a quarter mile. Uh, not that I know from experience, but okay. That's who people buy from, people that are real, okay? Um, and be energetic, be fun. They don't care about comps, okay? Stop with the comps. Stop. They don't care. They don't care about square footage. They don't care about the price. They don't care about that. What do they care about? When you talk about the kitchen, you talk about the counter, you let them know that they can fit 12 margaritas on that bad boy. 
Okay. If there's a hot tub, you talk about how many people can fit in the hot tub. That's the stuff you talk about with otters because that's what they care about. That's what their home is for, for entertaining, not for stature. Okay. Fourth one, owl. What do you think the owl represents? Thinkers, wisdom, right? All that kind of stuff. These are the detail-oriented folks. So the owls love numbers. Who do you think cares about comps? These gals and guys, right? What are the job titles of otters? What do you think? Accountants, good. What else? Engineers, good, right? The numbers folks, okay? So the owls dress in basic colors, right? They're not the bright color folks. These are the basic color guys and gals. Do, otter, excuse me, do owls ask questions? How, ma how many? <laughs> do owls act slowly? How slowly? So here's how you sell and show a house to an owl. These are the folks you have to focus on the numbers with. So who in here would say that they're not a numbers person? Who are the people that say, it's early, I can't do math before nine? <laughs> Don't raise your hand. <laughs> You've heard, okay. It's harder for those folks to relate to an owl. Why? Because what do they hate? Numbers. And what does an owl love? So what do you have to do for just a little bit of time, not hate what? Numbers. And if you tell an owl, oh, you know, I hate numbers. Do real estate agents do this? All the time, right? So you don't have to change who you are, but you better know your numbers. When I go to caravans, <laughs> people do their listing presentation. I swear to you, I swear to God, 15% of the time, Sandra can speak to this. Somebody yells out, what's the address? I'm sorry, you just gave a listing present. You didn't give the address? What's the price? You didn't give the price. That's kind of important. Would you agree? You can't be like that when you're showing a house to an owl. You guys with me? You can't be forget. You can't say, oh, I think it's a... 1,700 square feet? No, maybe it's 2,700. <laughs> you lose. You lose. You just have to prepare. You don't have to like numbers. You just have to know them for a couple hours. Everybody with me? The owl doesn't care about the feel of the home. Who cares about the feel? Otters. So the otter walks in the house and goes... This is it. <laughs> right? That's what the otters do. The owl walks in and goes, it doesn't look like it's 12 by 12. 12 by 11 and a half. No, this isn't, this isn't the right one. That's what owls do. So you have to understand, you've got to be patient with owls. Everybody okay with that? If you have to show an owl, 47 homes before they buy, will you still do it? Yes. Most people say no. What do you think you should say? Yes, who gives a crap how many homes you show them? If they become a client, are owls loyal? More loyal than anyone else. And do you know why? Because they did all the math, they did all the numbers, they looked you up, they know your firstborn child, they know all of it. Okay, before you even get there. So you have to be really patient with these folks. So one thing I, I, that I throw in, with owls, and I don't care what business you're in in sales, you have to break down their wall. What does an owl think about salespeople? They're yeah, they hate them, right? This. So what you need to say to an owl in any sales situation, something like, Hey, Mike, I just want you to know, in no way today are we going to be making a decision on a home. Okay, I really need to understand what you're looking for, what's really in your price range, what your market, all that's your neighborhood, all that kind of stuff. And if, it, if we have to look at 100 homes, hey, I'm ready.
but just know we're not going to be writing any offers. We're not going to do any of that stuff. Is that, is that okay? What do you think the owl now feels? Understood. And they don't feel what? Pressure. Right? This stuff matters. But what happens is, as a salesperson, we typically are one of these animals. Could you agree? Do you all know who you are primarily right now? So what style do you think you sell in? That style. There's four. You're one out of four. What's your likelihood of relating to somebody if you sell like that all the time? One out of four. You gotta sell the way people buy. You don't have to change your personality, right? You just have to change your language, okay? So what animal should you be? Somebody, yeah, chameleon. So when I was stealing these, I mean, when I was making up these animals, um, when I first saw this, so you were either going to be a chameleon or an octopus. Why? They change, they adapt. Does an octopus change its physical skeleton and organs? No. It just changes its color based on its environment. Same with a chameleon. So it's important you guys understand that. You don't change who you are. Don't be fake, don't be phony, don't be a you know what, okay? Be normal, but you've got to speak in their language. Last thing, and we're, we'll end on this. Who's ever been to a foreign country before not known the language? So you ask for a water, right? And they don't know what you're talking about, and then you go, no, water! You know water? <laughs> Um, how about you learn the word for water that they speak in? Would that be helpful? That's what people do in sales all the time. They just say water, 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 and you're not even speaking their language, okay? So that's me. That's my info. That's my Instagram. Hopefully y'all will follow me. I'll be over 50 um, by, the end of <laughs> by the end of today. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> But yeah, if you have questions about anything I do, again, please reach out, please connect. Um, remember, most important takeaway from today, Jack and Diet, vodka soda. See you guys at the bar. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. <laughs>